Good morning. Good morning. Oh. Good morning. Good morning. I'm delighted to be here with you and to celebrate with you all that's happened this, these past few days and to thank you for your presence here. And as I begin this homily in a special way, I'd like to thank all of the priests and religious, the deacons, men and women, religious, seminarians, lay leaders, and generous volunteers for your hard work and sacrifice this weekend. Let's give all those people a big hand. I truly like the theme for Steubenville 2015. Your work here has been limitless, and you're beginning to show it a bit. But I thank you, for I'm sure that you feel like the apostles in today's gospel, who shared with Jesus how excited and busy they had been, they on their missionary journey, and you working with the young church. And on this weekend, as the young people have been touched, I'm sure you have also been filled with Jesus' grace and love. And I'm sure also a lot tired. And my young brothers and sisters, like St. Paul in the second reading, coming here for a weekend with friends to experience with them worship and praise, dynamic talks, the sacrament of penance, and Eucharistic adoration, you have received a blessed opportunity, as St. Paul said, to come near, indeed to draw near to Jesus Christ, who we know is the bread of life. And I hope that on this weekend, you have discovered that Jesus' mercy, Jesus' generosity, Jesus' power is limitless. And indeed, as St. John Paul II told thousands and thousands of young people in the early 1990s, when World Youth Day was held in Denver, Colorado, sharing the words of John chapter 10, verse 10, he said, Jesus tells us, I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. And I pray that that's a gift each of you will carry home in your hearts as you leave here today. I pray that this weekend has been a time that you could be with and rest with the Lord, who so desires to love each one of you, to heal you, and to be part of your everyday life. And in the gospel, when Jesus tells the apostles, to come aside and rest a while, or in my own words, take a break. It reminded me of my own high school days, a long, long time ago. When halfway through each class, a bell would ring, and the person who was chosen would say, let us remember that we are in the holy presence of God. And for this weekend, I know, even if you didn't realize it when you started out in the journey, you have been in the holy presence of God. And in so many ways, the Lord was happy that you were here and that he could minister to you and be with you in faith. That he could open your hearts to all that he desires to give you. And if Jesus was far off, hopefully you gave him the opportunity to draw near. And as I was thinking of what we might do to focus on the primacy of God's love, God's love in our lives, and the need we all have, each one of us, to be affirmed by God's love. And the thought that even now, there might be somebody here for whom God is still a long ways away. They might feel that somehow God doesn't want to be close to them. They don't deserve it. Or that somehow what they've done is so bad that the Lord doesn't want to come to them. And I can assure you, only the opposite is true. And if the Lord still is far away from you, my young brothers and sisters, this is your lucky day, because the Lord wants to draw near. He wants to take you aside and rest with him, so that as you return home, the Lord might be the focus of your life. And you can say to anyone who wants to know, Jesus Christ is Lord. It's just that simple. So I thought, how could we do that with such a large crowd? So whether the Lord is close or far away, I'd like you to repeat the words of this prayer. In a special way, if the Lord is close to you, pray for the person who needs it here the most. 
Jesus, at times in my life, you have seemed far away. Yes, far away. Yes, far away. And in this weekend, through your grace, my heart has been opened. In this weekend, through your grace, my heart has been opened. As I've been touched with your sacraments. As I've been touched with your sacraments. And the worship and praise. And the worship and praise. And the talks. And the talks. And the witness of so many. And the witness of so many. Jesus, pour your love and grace into my heart. Keep close to me as I return home. Let me know your voice. Remove those obstacles from my life that keep me from you. That keep me from hearing your voice. Lord Jesus, give me the strength to welcome you into my life. Come to me today. Come to me always. Come to me always. Remove from my heart and life what keeps me from you. Remove from my heart and life what keeps me from you. And Jesus, this day I commit my life to you. Jesus, this day I commit my life to you. You know, the gospel today was talking about sheep. And I don't know if there's anybody here who's ever worked with sheep. If you work with sheep, raise your hand. And you can tell me later if this is true, okay? They said at the time of Jesus, the shepherds would come and they'd put all their sheep in one place for security. And in the morning, the shepherd would come and his sheep would hear his voice and they would follow him. Is that right? Okay. For some of you that grew up in the city, that's pretty good. And just like that example, which our Lord used with the people of his time because they were shepherds, you've come here. And you've heard the voice of Christ. You've heard the Lord speak to you. And so, like the apostles, you've taken the time to go apart with the Lord. And you've discovered here this weekend that being away from Christ is not an option. You know, the apostles, they wanted to know everything about the Lord. They wanted him to know what they've been doing. And Jesus wants to know what you've been doing. And now that you've heard his voice, it'll be much easier to come to him because you'll hear the call in your heart, in your soul, in your life. And now that you've made this commitment in prayer, hopefully Sunday Mass will not be an option. But it'll be something that you dare to go to to be fed and nourished. Something that helps you be close to Christ. Hopefully you understand that the grace the love, the mercy that Jesus wants to give to each one of you, why that helps form a relationship, a union with Jesus Christ who wants to lead us to God the Father. And he wants us to be open to the power of the Holy Spirit. And so all of us, we can take some tools with us. The next time the Lord seems far away, we can take advantage of the sacrament of reconciliation like we have this weekend. And when we want to be with the Lord, we know we can sit on the edge of our bed in our bedroom and look at the cross, or we can go to our parish church, or we can gather with our youth group, and we can pray, and we can sing and offer God our thanks. And so, as we sang together in responsorial psalm, if the Lord is our shepherd, we shall not want. May you never want, because Jesus Christ is with you, and in you, and speaking to you. Amen.